What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zillig, Zika Milligan, and Venom and Trilligan, and we are back on Ch Dong and Rumpa Trigger Happy Havoc. All right? And, you, man, dog, y'all gonna be like, surely this time, surely this time, it's the next day. No, it is not. If the last episode ended at 12 o'clock, this episode is starting at 2.20. So let's get back into the game. <laughs> Last episode, oh my goodness, this is hard. Last episode, Kyoko basically put Monokuma in check, okay? So now we're having one last class trial where we have to not only prove Monokuma killed Mukuro Ikusaka, whatever her name is, we also have to uncover every mystery in the school. Right now, we're about to start investigating. Let's get it going. I guess I'll start by taking another look at Mukuro's Monokuma file. Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered in other wounds, but these were at least several days old. Once we figure out who killed Makuro Ikusaba, then we'll know who the mastermind is. So where should I start my investigation out to figure out who killed it? Guess I started with the rooms that were locked up until now. They had Master's Room, the Bio Lab, and the door in the data center with Monokuma's face on it. Oh, and the second floor of the dorm where the gate was down before. It's, that should be open now, right? After that, I'll have to double check the areas that were connected to the murder, which means the garden and the dojo. Okay, let's get this. Time to get started. Oh, this is this is bumping. Th this is bumping. Th this 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 is bumping. All right, going to data lab first. Where do we find Monokuma in here chilling? Oh, I was here. Okay, okay. Hey, Makoto. Oh, Makoto, you here to look around too? Is that what you're doing here? Mm. Yeah, I can't help but wonder about that Monokuma door. Yeah. So I figured. If all the doors in the school had been unlocked, that one should be open too, right? But... Although I couldn't bring myself to open it. Because I mean... it might explode, right? And that really sucks, so you open it. Um, I'm sure she didn't mean it, but she made it sound like she was okay with me getting blown up. I don't think I'm really rocking with that, for real. Okay, so I guess I'll open it. Oh, wait, let me take cover first. I don't want to get exploded. Hina raced over to a nearby desk and hid underneath it. Okay, go ahead. Everything will be okay, right? All right, here goes nothing. I threw all my weight into it, but the door opened much easier than I expected. All right, what's in here? There was no explosion, thankfully. My first impression was, whoa, this place is totally sci-fi. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. What the heck? I mean, every part of this school leaves a bad taste in my mouth, but... Just a second. This place is like, number one gross. It's in a whole different league of creepy. All right, let's see what's popping up. What's this? There's some kind of hatch on the floor. But right now, I'm more concerned about that weird device. What is this device? Looks like some kind of control panel. It's really over the top though, like some kind of military installation or something. Mm. Yeah, it kind of looks like a mech cockpit, right? You fool me, probably freak out if you saw it. Cockpit. So the Monokuma room has a control panel that looks like some kind of cockpit. Then could that mean? Okay. All right, let's start poking at it or whatever. I'm gonna start pushing buttons. Hey, hold on, hold on, you can't just or whatever something like this, all right? But it was too late. Hina was already jabbing away at the control panel. Huh? huh, did you hear that? Yeah, I think it came from the other room. Hina, what did you push? <laughs> I'm not totally sure, but I think it was that one, the button that says data center. Data center? I took a good look at the control panel and I saw a bunch of buttons. 
each with the name of the of a room next to it. And just like Hina said, there was one labeled data center. That must be the one she pushed. But the data center, that's right next door. The room we were just in, that's where the strange noise came from. That's the noise Monokuma makes when he just pops out of nowhere, right? Then that but that button summons him. I'd probably go better go check it out. Yeah. Yes, please. I'm kind of scared out of my mind right now, so I'll just cheer you on from over here. That's the wrong button, Zeke. Stop being stupid. Did I just hear what I think I heard? Is that Monokuma? Hey! Give me all your donuts! What? Is that you, Hina? What? What? Aw, oh, man, busted! How'd you know? Say what? Anyway, what is this? Some kind of remote control camera kind of setup? You don't even know what you're controlling? Hello. Well, I mean, I can't see anything from in here. Found it. Ah, guess what I found? A self-destruct button. Don't push it! Too bad. Aw, oh, man. Were you seriously gonna push it? A anyway, I guess that settles it. The room with the Monokuma drawing on it and the control panel inside. That controls Monokuma. What the heck? She almost killed me! Ah. Whoa, hey Makoto, what the heck was that just now? Monokuma. Huh? huh? What do you mean? What were you controlling just now? It was Monokuma. Huh? Monokuma? Oh. What, for real? Yep, looks like that panel definitely controls Monokuma, which means the mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room. Yeah, they were definitely in here. The mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room, and this control room is totally separate from the data center area with all the monitors. In other words, hey, maybe the mastermind can't monitor us and control Monokuma at the same time. Kyoko's theory was right. But if the Mastermind's been controlling Monokuma from here, that means they've been inside the school this whole time, right? I guess that would have to be true. But if that is true... <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know! Okay, enough puns! Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. In the mastermind, Monokuma's puppeteer really is a 16th student. No, it can't be. There's no way, right? Monokuma control room. Um... What's wrong, Ma Makoto? I don't like that face you're making. No, it's nothing. Okay. What about you? Is everything okay? Cause, I mean... Oh, well, it's just... This is where the Mastermind's been hiding, right? Who knows if they set up traps or something? I can't say it isn't possible, but I really hope it's not true. Um, so, like... So, um, you want to leave soon? There's still a lot of places to check out. Yeah, good point. We can't waste all our time standing around here. Okay, you want to get going? Yeah. Let's get a butter. As soon as the door to the data center was closed, I heard a strange sound. What was that? Ah, oh! oh, the door, it just locked on its own. What? My hand shot out to grab the doorknob. You're right, it's locked, but why? <laughs> of course it's locked because the data center is now restricted. Monokuma! Just a second. Hey, no fair. You can't just go around restricting whatever you feel like. Hey. Um... It's for your benefit! Cause if that room stays open, I won't be able to move around! <laughs> Imagine how depressed everyone would get if the school mascot just up and stopped moving! Then that room... Yep. As you may have guessed, that's where my controls are! Um... So right now you're being operated by someone in that... Oh! So right now you're being operated by someone in that room! Yes indeed! Corruptamundo! You're a liar! But that doesn't make any sense! We were just in there and we didn't see anyone. <laughs> oh, you didn't, did you? Ooh, are you sure you were as thorough as you could have been? It's that hatch <laughs> on the ground. 
Did you happen to check a certain suspicious hatch? No way. The hatch on the floor? <laughs> Too bad. That was your one big chance and you blew it. Too bad. Of course, the hatch can't be open from the outside anyway, so whatever. Hmm. Now then, this room is officially restricted, so no more investigating. I'll be relying on you guys to tell the others. Yeah. Peace! Um... He's gone, but... So, um... Was he telling the truth the mastermind was hiding in there? In fact, if you think back to when we got locked out of the control room, that proves it for sure. Huh? Then, when I said we should leave... Well, that hatch couldn't, couldn't, couldn't be open from the outside anyway, right? So it's not your fault. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, we don't have to let it get to us. We have to stay positive and make the most of the time we have left. You're right. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's keeping my body moving. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go run around and tell everyone what we found here. Nice. You've got, to, you've got me all motivated again. You got it. Okay, I'm out. See you later. Hina took off at full sprint. And I have to do what I can too. It's the only way forward. All right, so we've been to the data lab. We've been to the data lab. We've been to the data lab. 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 Biakuya, this is the headmaster's room. Heard an awful lot about it, but this will be my first time seeing it for myself. Ah, oh, Makoto, it's you. Oh, Byakuya. How's it going, pal? Well, you came at you came to the right place at the right time. Would you like to see something interesting? What do you mean something interesting? Hmm. Take a look at this. It was on top of that pathetically outstanding desk. Class 78 student registry. Hmm. It contains the profiles for all of us and Makuro. So in other words... Apparently, Class 78 refers to us. Wait, when we found Makuro's profile in Kyoko's room... I see. That's right, it also mentioned Class 78. That must be where- this must be where Kyoko got that page. And since the rest of our profiles are listed in there along with hers... In other words... There can be no doubt. Mukuro was a student here at Hope's Peak Academy, just like the rest of us. Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student. That must be how Kyoko learned about it. But it seems that Kyoko was in a hurry. Huh, what do you mean? I'm talking about when she stole it. The uneven tearings and the way the paper had been crumbled, she must have been in a hurry. Well, since she snuck in to get it, I'm sure she wanted to get out as fast as possible. But what's your point? She was in so much of a hurry that she only got the first page. The first page? Hmm. Correct. Makuro's profile actually contains two pages. What? So in other words... In other words, when it comes to this profile, there was more information about Makuro that we still didn't have. What kind of information is it? Why do you ask me to explain every little thing? You can read, can't you? It seems to be some sort of detailed report put together by the headmaster himself. Hmm. I don't know what kind of man he was, but I'm glad he left us such an interesting clue. I was half listening to Byaki as I skimmed through the report. Mukuro re re reappeared suddenly in the background. M Mukuro reappeared suddenly, and in the background, an entity floats, close but just out of reach. The entity known as the Ultimate Despair. Right now, I can't be sure if this is a single person or some kind of group. Whatever it is, Makuro definitely has some sort of connection to it. I have a bad feeling about all of this. I need to push forward with my research into the ultimate despair. I need to pay attention to Mukuro's behavior too. This is just my gut feeling, but I think she's dangerous. Despite the countless battles she must have gone through as a member of Fenrir, when she entered Hope's Peak Academy, she didn't display any signs of battle wounds or scars. That fact alone proves her tremendous skill in battle. Naturally, I want to believe in her. She's one of my students, after all. But if I decide she's a danger to the other students, I will be forced to take all reasonable measures. What I'm thinking right now, my current working theory, is that Mukuro, who is 
what the ultimate despair i don't know mukuro might be ultimate despair who knows the ultimate despair who was also the mastermind and the current headmaster monokuma is the student that performed the great tragedy Mukuro, the ultimate despair. I don't think there can be any doubt about it now. But wouldn't that mean that Mukuro and the Mastermind were allies? So why? Why would they kill Mukuro? Plus, even the headmaster seemed to be afraid of what Mukuro was capable of. They would have had to take her completely by surprise to kill her like that. Or maybe it means the Mastermind is even stronger than Mukuro was. What? What's wrong, Makoto? Huh? That's fine. You seem to be lost in thought, but I should probably point out one other thing. There's another important bit of information within that file that you should know. What is it? Did you notice a picture in there? A picture of a girl perhaps you've never seen before? A girl seems to be included as part of our class 78. That should be enough for you to figure out who the girl is. And further information about that girl is included in that file. 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, and it even lists her vitals, 31, 22, 32. Well, what do you think? What do I think? Are you asking me, like, if she has a nice body? Stop talking. You hopeless idiot. What I'm trying to tell you is maybe you'll want to keep that in mind for later. Maybe you'll make your way back to the corpse and maybe you'll think, oh, could that mean? Wait, is he trying to say... There's a chance the body isn't actually Mukuro? Is that what he's saying? Personally, what I'm thinking seems all but impossible, but it would have hurt to confirm, right? It's all clear now. That's all I was trying to say. What you do with that is information is your business. So I'm back to being Byakuya's errand boy. Gotta love it, gotta love it. Hmm. Oh, and one last thing. It's a bit of advice for me to you, so I suggest you pay attention. Advice for me? You seem to be getting along with Kyoko quite well. Not that we're getting along. She's just done a lot to help me. <laughs> well, don't put too much faith in her. Huh? In other words... The cost of that faith might be more than you can afford. What are you saying? <laughs> just what I think. Call it a hunch. A hunch. But my hunches tend to be proven right. The advice is free this time. Take it or don't, as you will. I'll keep it in mind, thanks. Watch how you talk about Kyoko. Watch how you talk about Kyoko. The bookshelf seems really well made, filled with files and thick books. Okay. There are documents scattered all over the floor. It makes me feel anxious. Suit and registry. Trophies. All right, let's get out of here. All right. Oh, this was locked over here, wasn't it? Well, here I am in the bio lab. It's so cold. It's like abnormally cold. I feel like I'm in a giant refrigerator. Seriously, why is it so cold? Uh, so cold. Why is it so cold in here? That's the first thing I need to figure out. There's some kind of weird machine or something built into the wall. On the left side is a bunch of glowing light, blue lights. On the other side... Some kind of weird machine. I've seen something like this before. Oh, that's it. I've seen this thing in horror movies and stuff. It's a fridge for storing dead bodies. Does that mean this bio lab is actually a morgue? Should probably take a closer look around. Some kind of booklet here. Looks like an instruction manual. We offer an eco-friendly alternative to standard dry ice for all your ca cadaver needs. In addition to the germicidal lamps, we also provide an ozone generator for the removal of ethylene gas. Simply insert the ca cadaver and the blue light will let you know the automated systems have activated. Temperature and humidity levels will be adjusted automatically for optimum settings. With our system, anyone can keep a body fresh and daisy as long as you need. 
In the unlikely event of a problem, the red light will activate and an alarm will sound immediately. The exterior is stainless steel and we do offer an optional letter, leather upholstery upgrade package. This is the instruction manual for the fridge? It's a stack of tarps here. I've been seeing a lot of those things lately. Bunch of glowing lights. The right hand lights are off. Well, looking around, I think I get it. It seems clear to me now. It was a makeshift morgue. And about those blue lights by each slot. It looks like it's set up so when the slot is occupied, the blue light comes on. Which will mean inside each slot lit up in blue. Another one of the victims is... I can't let my emotions take, take control right now. There's only one thing I can do for everyone who's died. And that's defeat the mastermind. And to do that, I have to continue, continue my investigation. I don't have any other option. Okay, what else was locked? Anything else up here that was locked? If not, then the dorms is all that's left. The gate's open. We can finally check out the second floor of the dorms, which means I have to do it. Oh. Oh dear. This is the second floor of the dorms? Looks like some ancient ruins. Or no, more like a battlefield, like a bomb blew up here or something. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Who was bro's ops? Who was he beefing with? The bed is completely torn apart. I mean, it's not even a bed anymore. It's just garbage. Oh, fast coins. Thank you. I opened the door just a crack, glanced inside, and immediately closed it again. There wasn't even a hint of the bathroom, just a big pile of rubble. Oh my goodness. Who, who is it? Who are you beefing with? Coward, bro. You gotta check everything. Nothing in here? That's a really nice bathroom. Oh my goodness. Ugh, get that. Ugh, what the heck? This room is filled with lockers. Must have been for Hope's Peak students who came before us. The class before ours must have used these lockers. I can't imagine a way to get this locker open. I'm not even gonna try. What if I can open this locker? There's a card reader installed on the door. That must be how you get the locker open after all. It's pretty similar to the card readers from the locker rooms on the second floor of the school. I have to use your e-handbook to open those up. So what does that mean? Well, let's just give it a try. No luck. Maybe only the locker's owner can open it, which means none of us can do it. A giant, there's a metal plate mounted on the locker. There's no way to get it open. Yeah, nothing for us in there. Goodness, man. Oh, that's a nice room. This room doesn't really feel like a student's room. It has a more adult atmosphere. Correct. Oh, snap! It's the headmaster's private room. Kyoko! Indeed. I've been through this room several times already, but I still have one little regret. So I decided to check it out one more time. Huh, regret? Kyoko looks almost meek right now. She must be thinking about something. I probably shouldn't bother her.
Huh? There's a strange gap in the wall. Is this some kind of design mistake or a construction defect or something? So... There's a gap here. But not just any normal gap. I can feel a breeze coming out. A breeze? Indeed. There's likely an open space on the other side of this wall. Open space, does this mean... You mean like a hidden room? I think I might know how to open it. You know how to... Did you figure out some kind of trick or something? Indeed. A very easy trick, yes. So easy, I'm not sure you can even call it a trick. I saw a program on that PC that I think controls it. Enter the right password and the door should open right up. However... But I don't have a clue what that password might be. All we know is it's probably... It's probably made up of letters and or numbers. We can't really go from there. Ah, uh, you're right. It's not nearly enough to go it's on. true. I looked through all this paperwork and the f all the files on the PC. Everything I could think of. I learned more about him than I really than I had any desire to, but nothing that might have been his password. Ooh. When I think about how much time I wasted on this. The PC on the desk must have belonged to the headmaster. It would seem Whoever used this last, it looks like they were very interested in the ultimate despair. The PC still has some search results left on it. And we might be able to use it to get some results on the ultimate despair. However, there's not much though, nothing we don't already know. In other words, the ultimate despair isn't one individual, but instead points to some kind of group. That group is responsible for the tragedy which happened one year ago. There are worse sorts of people whose driving force comes from despair. However, and that's all there is. Not much to it, is there? <sighs> but I guess that's the best he could do as a complete Kirigiri failure. But any information about the mastermind is helpful, right? I appreciate whatever info we can get our hands on. Correct. I see. That's a good outlook to have. Oh, they look like they finna jump me. Jeez. So there's a hidden room that she couldn't get into. That's what she meant by regret. I think we can assume that there must be some kind of clue waiting in there. But maybe for her, there's more to it than that. Anyway, if we want to get in, we need to figure out the password. And if Kyoko can't figure it out, no way do I stand a chance. No way, there might be a chance. The password could be... Something Kyoko wouldn't have thought of or something that she didn't want to think of. For example, what about your name? What? Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about... I was just trying to think of what the password might be. I'm sure she hasn't tried it. I mean, it's totally understandable. After the way she talked about her dad, the idea that he would use her name as his password. Knowing how she is, I bet the idea never even occurred to her. Um, do you mind if I try it, just to be sure? Well... It's not like you need my permission. If you want to try it, try it. Do whatever you want. Okay. The desk is home to a computer. It must have belonged to the headmaster. Okay, don't look at the desk. Look at the computer. Stupid. You know, I'm kind of... I'm glad I thought of trying Kyoko's name. But if that's not it, that might just hurt Kyoko even more. Hey. If you're worried about me, Makoto, don't be. I already know that your guess is wrong. Okay. In that case, here goes nothing. I collected myself to turn to face the computer monitor. Let me just type the password here. I typed in her full name, Kyoko Kirigiri. My hands were tense, slightly trembling as I finished typing it in. Beep. Oh. What? That did it? Kyoko, it worked! Why? Kyoko. Without looking at me, she disappeared into the hidden room. She looked grim. Kyoko. Hey, Kyoko. May as well not have even been in the room. Her gaze was fixated on one thing only. Present. Wrapped and covered in such joy. That's what made it so unusual. There's a brightly colored box here. It seems totally out of place in here. The more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Should we open it? I'm kind of getting a bad vibe from it, but I mean, we can't not open it. Okay. Makoto. Be careful, Makoto. 
Why, you think it's dangerous? No, not dangerous, but surprising probably. Huh? It would seem... If it is what I think it is, at the very least, it's not something you'll be happy to see. Wait, so you know what's in there? Anyway... Just don't scream or anything, okay? Are you saying it'll make something that make me want to scream? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna open it. Step, step by heavy step, I approached the box. I took a deep breath and I took hold of the lid. Slowly, ever so slowly, I lifted it up. Light began to sneak its way into the box. I stole a hesitant glance inside and... He screamed. Kyoko's advice was no use. I let out a trembling cry. Oh! What was in the box? It was bones. Human bones. It was the last thing I expected to find in such a bright, joyful box. I mean, who could have possibly imagined? I see. Just as I thought. What? Just as you thought? How could you have known that? I mean, there were bones in there. Human bones. Wrong. Well... It's not that I was thinking of Bones specifically. I just had a feeling it would be his body. That's pretty much the same thing. A dead guy in a box. My father. Huh? What about him? Correct. What you found in the box. Those bones. That body. That's my father. Or at least what's left of him. Uh, are you serious? This is Kyoko's dad? The same man she's been searching for? Hold on, how can you know that for sure? How do you know that's him? So... Given all the information we already have, that's the only possible answer. So that's the same... The, per, the same person that... The same... The, the, so, that the, so that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible that he's somewhere in the school right now. <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure you know this already, but this killing game began with 16 parts. Okay, yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it. Alter Ego said the headmaster was probably here in the school, but the only ones who were alive at the start of the killing game were 16 students. When you put those two ideas together, it doesn't make take much to assume in other words that most likely my father was in this school but he was also dead that's my assumption anyway as kyoko explained her analysis she was completely calm or no she wasn't calm she was only trying to seem calm she said it as she said it she said it was just as, as she thought so she knew it was a possibility but i have to believe at some point she wanted to be proven wrong which is why she never looked in the box herself, even though she had plenty of chances. I know Kyoko said she wanted to see her father so she could cut off all ties, but was that all there was to it? I gave up some of that pride. In order to enter Hope's Peak, I had to reveal myself to the school. I did it knowing it was something a true Kirigiri detective would never do. Would she really give up her pride just for that? I couldn't help but wonder. I feel like I should have made pointless small talk right now. Maybe I should look around a bit first. This picture. It's all faded. It must be pretty old. Wait, is that a picture of... Hey, Kyoko. Why would you? Well, this is annoying. I came here to cut myself free of the past, and yet... To now find something like this... So what do you expect me to do now? Then I was right. It's a picture of Kyoko when she was a little girl. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all this time, he must have really cared about her. Why? Why? What? I wanted to face him and tell him myself to cut him out of my life for abandoning me. That's the whole reason I came here. And now he's abandoned me again. And this time he even stole my only opportunity I had to move on. 
Has there ever been a worse father? Kyoko. This filing cabinet seems to be the place you would find a clue. I should take a closer look. But I don't think Kyoko would like some stranger like me touching her dad's stuff. Hey. It's fine. Check whatever you want. Are you sure? All right, then. I went through each drawer one by one, starting from the top. But all I found were piles and piles of unrelated documents. He was pretty dedicated to his job, huh? Well? It's just because he didn't have anything else. He could have inherited our family business, our legacy, and said he left it all behind. No. He has yeah. not told you. If he couldn't even handle a job like this, he would have been that much more of a failure. I'm sure he couldn't stand the thought of that and it made him desperate. Sheesh. The headmaster's desk. It's probably hiding some kind of clue, so I really want to check it out, but... I really don't want to touch Kyoko's dad's desk without her permission. Hey. Don't worry about me. Feel free to look around as much as you like. Are you sure? Because... Never let anything get in the way of the investigation. I don't. Okay, and if you don't mind. Starting from the top, I opened all the desk drawers and looked inside. I rummaged through each one, finding nothing but unrelated documents. But in the last drawer... Huh? Is this... It's an e-handbook, right? And it has a label on it that says, In Case of Emergency. I found some kind of emergency handbook in the headmaster's desk. In other words... A handbook with no limitations, given to the school's ultimate authority, the headmaster. I'm assuming that's what it is. I think you're probably Could right. It, seem... it might prove useful as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? Huh? But Kyoko... I... I don't need it. If you don't want it, go ahead and leave it here. Then I guess I'll take it. Is it really okay? Hey. Listen, Makoto. Huh? Can I ask you a favor? What is it? So... I know it's completely unreasonable to ask you this. And I know it'll only inconvenience you that much more, but... Hey. Could you leave? Huh? Correct. Just for a little while. I just... I just like to be alone for a bit. Kyoko. Don't worry, I'm fine. I just need to calm down a little. Just a second. I need to get my emotions in order. You know Kyoko. You told me before about the relationship you had with your dad. How you're only connected by blood, not by heart and soul. But... Maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe he hoped to see me again someday. Is that what you were going to say? If so, it's just a theory. And this isn't an issue that can be settled with theories. That picture doesn't change the facts of what happened, what I went through. I... That problem can't be solved so easily. You're right, I'm sorry. Anyway... Once I've gotten myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please, just give me some time to myself. Okay, I understand. Then, I'll see you later. Dang. Is she really okay? Kyoko, it must have been a complete shock to her. I mean, it was a shock to me! To find out what happened to the headmaster. There's no doubt the mastermind performed that evil deed. They killed the headmaster. They killed Kyoko's father. They killed him. The headmaster is dead. The one leading Hope's Peak class, Thaf, the one who finalized the plan to isolate you, was the Hope's Peak headmaster. So that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned this all out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It's possible that he's somewhere in the school right now. But we were wrong about that. The headmaster wasn't the mastermind. Which means the mastermind's true identity is. <laughs> alright, bro, alright, I got I got it. Fifteen of us met in the hall, and add Maruko to the mix, Makuro to the mix, and you get sixteen. And including me, only six of us are still alive. Everyone else is dead. Even Makuro. Even she's undeniably dead. So the ones still left alive are... Me. 
Byakuya. Hiro. Toko. Hina. And Kyoko. Only those six people are still alive. And there's no question. Wait, no, that can't be. I refuse to believe it. There has to be some other way. This just has to be. What if they're counting it not... What if they're not, what if they're counting it by ultimates and not person or not, and not bodies, you know, like there's 16 students. So 16 ultimates, but because the 16th ultimate was the ultimate despair, that's all counted together. So all of the group is counted together as one. I mean, I doubt it, but it's a theory. And as freaking crazy as this game is with its logic, it's not very, uh, it's not like a, it's not a wild or crazy or just off the wall theory. All right, let's give it a try. Took up my handbook. Okay, your handbook's not gonna work. Use the owners. But yes, use the emergency handbook. My goodness. All right, just what I was hoping for. Now let's see what we've got inside. This locker is totally disorganized. Whoever it belongs to probably has organization problems in every part of their life. This is a crystal ball. A crystal ball? No, it can't be. There's no way he ever used his locker. It's just not possible. Yeah. Is this a deck of playing cards? No, they're tarot cards. But wait, aren't those used for telling fortunes? It's a coincidence. There's all kinds of textbooks and notebooks stacked up in no particular order and dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever stuff this is didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. I'm trying to act casual and as natural as possible. I picked up one of the notebooks I saw, but the moment I looked inside the notebook, any sense of easiness I may have had evaporated. Yasuhiro Hagakure. What? There's no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook was written Yasuhiro Hagakure. Is this our Yasuhiro? The notebook also contained a large number of notes for a variety of different classes, which would mean he attended classes here. No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hiro came to this school at the same time as the rest of us, and we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had the chance to take any classes. So what is this notebook? Oh my goodness. Nothing that might be a clue. I actually like Hero too. I mean, I don't really like him like him. Like he's not nothing, he's not nothing special. But I think he was a he's a pretty you know silly character and I like him. So I, I don't really want him to be the mastermind. There's hey bro, look, as long as Kyoko lives, I'm good. I don't even care if Makoto dies. I just need Kyoko to make it out. And Hina, and Hina! There's just one thing, some kind of pocketbook. I don't see any name written on it, so I can't say for sure whose it is, but there's some writing on the inside. It could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I better take a look. It's like a girl's handwriting, and all the letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must be really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook, but my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there, words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in the communal life. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. Just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our student prodigy, prodigy safe, to keep them as the hope for our future. Only their genius can overcome disaster, and only their hope can overcome despair. 
for the future of our country, our world. It's not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the corrupted world to serve as the foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was. I knew it, and I knew exactly who this pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko, it couldn't be anyone else. But if this belongs to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hadn't seen her dad since she was little. Talk to the one who came up with the plan. Headmaster and my father. What does all this mean? I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing, but when I reached the last page, the question mark started spinning through my head. It just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganized, and scrawled. What is this? What does it mean? I have no idea. How could this possibly make any sense? But the more I see, the less it makes sense. Because these lockers, I mean, they had to belong to the previous students, right? So why am I seeing these? Why are there things in the lockers that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seems like it belongs to Hiro. And a pocketbook that seems like it belongs to Kyoko. Has to be some kind of explanation. If I want to keep enough, if I have to keep move, and if I want to find that out, I have to keep moving the investigation forward, and I have to believe in everyone. What is going on, Kyoko? I'm believing in you, Kyoko. Kyoko, I am believing in you. Please don't, Kyoko. Please don't, please don't do this to me, man. Come on, Kyoko. Please, come on. They're already open. Just take the doors off. Oh, you goober. Yeah. I'm about to go talk to Kyoko. This needs to be confronted. I'm gonna keep it real, Kyoko. There's all kinds of stuff I wanna talk to her about, but I better give her some more time. Man, forget time. I need to confirm with her that she is not on no weird timing. Look, I trust Kyoko, okay? He's like, like the only character in here that I genuinely like, like, like. I mean, besides Hina and Celeste, but they're bad. She's the only remaining character that I like. I, I, I can't have her like g going off the hinges. Okay. Oh, we have to go everywhere. Oh yeah, we also gotta um go to where the murder took place. Um, huh? It's gone. Makuro's body. It's not here? What the heck? Okay, four chickens. Body in the tool shed. I didn't find anything even close to a dead body. But if it's not in here either, then it must be in the bio lab. But of course, aren't the only thing I need to check in here. There's also the other thing, the tarp. The tarp played a key role in another case, so I'd better look into it. The killer used the tarp to keep the sprinklers from getting the body wet, which means the killer might have left some clue behind here. Huh? I didn't notice this before, but there's a small stamp on one corner of the tarp. It says Biolab. Then this originally came from the Biolab. That's all I really need to check here. Dear Lord. Okay, okay. Gotta go to Dojo. Go, go, Dojo. Oh, 
Oh, uh, Taco, so this is where you were. What do you want? What do you want? I'm so disgusting, you want me out of your sight? No, that's not it at all. I just thought maybe you found a clue. Well, I haven't. I didn't find anything, not one single clue. I figured since this place was related to the case, it would have something, right? But there wasn't anything other than ordinary here. Give it back! Give me back my precious time! Calm down. What's your problem? Don't tell me to calm down. Do you have any idea what I'm going through right now? When everyone finds out, they're gonna call me useless, good for nothing. Nobody's gonna say that. <laughs> Master Will! Uh, I'm not sure I can disagree with that. <laughs> I don't want that! Okay. Well, I don't think there's any clues here, so I'm gonna get going. We still gotta check in here. What? Um, this is a school announcement. Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, Please make your way to the gym ASA possible. What? Now he wants to give us a hint? It's suspicious. There's no doubt about that. This could be a trap. But even knowing that, he said to go to the gym, right? Why you don't just bring me to the gym? Hero. <laughs> Makoto! Why'd you act so surprised? Uh um, no reason. You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? Uh, I, uh, I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You already talked to him. What'd he say? Listen, sorry, but I... Uh, I gotta go. What? No point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. He's trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. Has he been hiding something this whole time? Man, get on with it. You don't gotta do that every time. Hello, welcome, welcome, hello. Are you ready for your final hint? Well, it just so happens to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope. This must be the envelope. <laughs> and just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Yeah. Don't worry, just get on with it. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope and I opened it. What I found was a single photograph. It featured a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well. What? It was everyone who'd come to Hope's Peak at the same time as me. Wait, but there's someone behind Sayaka. She's the only one I don't recognize. Wait, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Byakuya and I were in the headmaster's room and we looked at that fire, Mukuro Ikusaba. And this girl is... What? Why? Why is Mukuro here with everyone else? And even more than that, just having everyone here posed like this is weird enough by itself. We're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like this. And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. I'm not in the picture. I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. But I guess that makes sense. After all, I don't remember taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived here at Hope's Peak Academy. So it was natural for me not to be in this picture, but what's definitely unnatural is that everyone else is in the picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other until they got here. 
What if this picture is real? Then that could mean, could it be everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is. <laughs> How long are you gonna keep up this rambling slick? Solico solilo soliloquy of yours, Hamlet. What are you gonna do? You're kind of getting in the way standing there, you know? Hmm. So I mean, get out! But I told you I'm not fielding any questions! What kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answer? That'd be totally out of left field. <laughs> I guess that means he's done talking. Dang it. So in the end, all I found in the gym was even more confusion. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? But it looked so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? Which would mean everyone but me Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That should clear this up. No, I have to clear this up. What is even going on? Oh, Byakuya. Listen, do you think we could talk? Byakuya? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Byakuya, wait! But of course he didn't, he just walked away. What the? Why was he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. I'm so lost. What the heck is even happening right now, man? I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. And the first thing I saw when I got there was her passed out again. Huh, Toka? Toka, are you okay? No, no, she's not dead, is she? Oh, it's Jill. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's cold, it's super cold, it's so cold, I think I might catch a cold. If you keep ta taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. What? I was asleep. Ah, oh, I must have fainted again. Uh -huh. Oh, I bet you were staring, standing there staring at me getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Uh -huh. Oh, then what? Hide and bother? Oh, my lord. Okay, so why did you pass out? <laughs> I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What did you do? To, what did you do to Miss Karose? Morose? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bingo Bazinga! We share the same basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because even if she forgets something, I totally remember. So it's like double the memory. memory. No, it's more like half. But all I want to know right now is, where's my little darling? Tell me now or I slit your throat. I don't know. I'm sure Byaki is around somewhere doing his own investigating. Mm, yes, yes. By himself? I assume so. Oh, Ooh, I fire. knew it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't imagine how lonely he must be right now. <laughs> okay. Toko shot off. Her eerie laugh echoing behind her. Totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point asking Genocide Jack anywhere. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? Gotta be a reason for- Oh yeah, you don't see the dead body right there, huh? The fridge is open. I'm sure that was shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Kyoko, right. what did you get here? She faints so easily. Kyoko! Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't need to apologize. Listen. But listen, about this room. Oh yeah, it's... It would seem... It's a morgue. Yeah. I knew it. I suspected as much. And Toka must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there, and well, there you have it. 
You knew she'd faint it? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assumed she must have sneezed, and once I got inside, the real reason came clear. It would seem... I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there, that's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why has everything got to be so difficult with her? Anyway... Anyway, we should close it up. I don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Makoto. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko, appro Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched, but suddenly she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. How come? Because Mukuro's body is in here. What? Mukuro's bot corpse? Mukuro's body is inside the fridge? I see. Just like every other time, the mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it? Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I guess. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a look at the body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Makoto. I need to do my own examination of the course as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then... Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there, that's it? I guess I'll wait over there. Should ask Kyoko about that group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about that announcement Monokuma made earlier. Ooh. You mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Why not? Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. Wish I could go back and do the same, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her. I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? If the mastermind forged that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. You still gotta tell her about it, though. If I were you, I'd tell her about it still. It's a fridge meant for storing dead bodies. I can't do it, I can't look inside. You know, I think I've seen a tarp like this somewhere before. Ah, it's the same one I found in the garden tool shed. And if I remember that tarp, had a stamp on it that said Biolab. And that's the tarp that I, that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got it from the bio lab and took it over there. Updated, okay. Oh. On the left side is a bunch of blue lights. The right there are. Seem... It would seem the blue light comes on when a slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around, the number of blue lights that are on, including Makaros, there's nine in total. Nine. Nine lights? <sighs> okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone can do good work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. Did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? And what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the- Oh! They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. Is it possible they were- 
I don't know. About to say, is it possible that they were already dead? Like they were dead at the very, they were dead from the beginning, and then they just decided to use their corpse. The victim, uh, I already said that. They had also been struck in the head with an object by the stick as a metal pipe. The body was covered in other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds, but the file said they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because all the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However, but that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds it makes it seem like they've been there forever. Like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But all we got from the Mono all we got the Monokuma but we all got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least a few days old, there's no way they could have had anything to do with it. If their mastermind we don't start investigation and get the file until a body's been discovered. Okay? So basically, the mastermind could have killed her and hid her body until they were ready for us to discover it. So then. But what if Makuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least. Certainly, you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of the many. Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other words... They envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then as they investigate, they test what they find against uh, each of the other, these, uh, these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. Hey. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now is the time. Come to think of it, there was one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Makuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, but vital... 97 pounds, vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get all that right? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is, without a doubt, Makuro Ikusaba. And? Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. So then... Then it looks like we have no further business with Makuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh wait, are we not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad? Did you forget she was our enemy once? A part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed. She's a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. Whew. You really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. But for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? So then... I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Ah, hold on! I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in that locker. If I don't do it now... Hey, Kyoko. I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel I have to ask. What? Go ahead then, out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms? Indeed. I do, yes. But to get any information of the lockers, you'd need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using the emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So? Did you find anything, anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found... a pocketbook. And after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... 
Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is, there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have my pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster, about your father. What? If that's true... Could that mean... That video is real, too? Video? Makoto. Makoto, I think everything is starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you talking I... about? I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just saw with my own two eyes. Okay, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker. Makoto. If you watch this, it will make all it would all make sense. A DVD. And it says class 78 urgent news. So... I found it in that hidden room after you left. Anyway. I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you find that pocketbook in a place none of us has ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. But I guess that means there's some important clue on this DVD. Makoto. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words... So as it turns out, the arra arrangements I'd made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the question to the answers I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. And beca all because of the mastermind. However... But there is one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. <laughs> It's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it? Why does it bother so much? Bother me so much no to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She let out a small laugh as she said it, but her smile was filled with sorrow. <sighs> so that's it for my rambling. There's still so much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There is only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves, as ju serves justice or suffering, whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because... Because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then. Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I'd better get going myself. I got that DVD from Kyoko. As you head to the AV room to check it out. Kyoko said something about a hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world. I can't afford to lose. They should be able to play the DVDs just fine. Well then, i better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. It said it was playing, but nothing appeared on the screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have been only a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then all of a sudden, an image appeared. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Saika in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was the was of the man positioned on one of the sides of the screen. 
It was the voice of a middle-aged man. I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Sayaka's tense faith didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? You want me to accept that? Saiki was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life in this school? I accept. What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now. But this, only this. I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard. Because I know how much Sa Sayaka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor, the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Huh? What I saw was me. And possibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin... Yes. Yes! Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed to be like a fairly normal conversation. But I, the I and the here and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster. So much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Now, shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. This can't be real. I said yes? I'm sorry I'm putting you through. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Once again, the video got cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Byakuya. Toko. Hina. Everyone. They all said they agreed to live in this school forever. And then... Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She sat down with the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, her father. And when he asked her this question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently turned off. Which means the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Say what? Oopsie, look like it broke out of service. What? It just so happened to break just now. Too bad. Now then, win doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. <laughs> That's what failure is, right? He definitely did that, bro. Man, failure in my rear end. You cut the power on purpose, bro. Whatever. Even if I watch the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. He asked the same question and they'd all said yes. I can't help myself. I let out a huge exasperated sigh, but as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself. A disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, 
at that point my memory was gone okay look i had this theory sometime in chapter two but i didn't say anything but are we clones like is there some type of weird cloning technology going on here because this is just weird thinking back on it now at that point my memory was gone at that time i'd forgotten I couldn't remember why I'd come to this school and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed to obviously work in the favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black. There is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> it's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. That's the end of the episode. Peace out, guys. I love y'all. Next episode, we're going to do the class trial. We're going to beat this whole thing. Man, I was going to try and do it all in this one recording, but I'm so freaking tired right now, bruh. Like, and then I, my grandma's going to be home soon, and I don't want to risk, like, you know, inter a lot of interruptions in such a climactic moment. So, I, I got I to gotta tap out. Peace out. I love you guys. Tap in next time. <laughs>